There's technically a minute to go, but I can tell people are excited to learn about garden. Uh, and I, I'm keen to get started before anyone realizes that this is a garden project update and tries to escape, like them. Um, uh, let's get going. So I, I, I rewatched, uh, never rewatch your old talks. Uh, I rewatched um, the garden updates from last year. Uh, and it starts with me moaning for about five minutes about how I couldn't think of a funny title for a garden update talk. And I can say that I've at least solved that problem uh, this time. Uh, this is a talk about how our garden grew. It's a garden project update talk. Um, I'm Dr. Jules. Uh, I work for IBM. I was sort of the first dojo work because no one as tall as Colin Humphreys counts. Um, and I am the project lead for garden and autoscaler. Um, this is how to escape. <laughs> I really love that they have a law uh, that you have to tell people how to escape from presentations in Boston. Like, they've clearly also rewatched my talk. So this talk is in three parts. Uh, we're going to talk about what uh, this garden thing is, some cool stuff we've done this year, and stuff we're planning next, which is probably not surprising for a project update track. So what is garden? Well, uh, let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to tell you a story. All good talks should involve a story. In the beginning, there was jar files, what I call ghetto containers. Uh, they were right once, run anywhere. And everything was good. But it wasn't quite good. There were some problems with them that they didn't work. Um, so we were like, we need some other stuff to make these containers work. We need isolation. So the dependencies are, um, are isolated, um, so that your things actually run anywhere. We need it to look like a VM, all this stuff. So we invented these namespaces things that you might have heard of. We invented these C groups things that you might have heard of. And then they were wrapped in this thing called LXC, which was a wrapper for these kernel things. And then we created this warden thing, which was a wrapper for that. And then we got rid of the LXC thing. Warden became garden because Go and, yeah. Uh, we split it into an API and implementation. That was actually a good move. So you had the Garden API, and then you had how we actually implemented Garden, um, and then Docker. <laughs> a disturbance in the force. <laughs> um, so what did Docker have that these things didn't have? What was this, uh, this whole Docker thing that suddenly happened and changed everything? I think Docker did do two things which were really different from what we were doing before. And those things, one was encapsulation. So encapsulation, which is really this idea of containers as opposed to Linux containers. This idea that I could take this shippable unit and move it around, and it would look the same in these other places. Um, uh, that was really, really new and interesting. Uh, and also marketing, no. Um, but I had to say it, right? Um, and also user experience. They genuinely figured out a UX for these low-level namespaces and C groups and Warden and LXC that was really good to use, so good that people were like, you know what, I could manage these containers myself. I don't need all this stuff, right? Um, so it's pretty good. Um, and it was so good that it, people started saying, this thing's a standard. If you don't use Docker, you're not standard. Uh, <laughs> That was such a compelling argument that this good-looking uh, fellow with a British accent uh, in about 2015 suggested that we might want to run Cloud Foundry uh, on Docker and have like a Docker backend for Garden. Uh, did we do that? No. Why? Uh, for a few reasons. Firstly, it was too big. This Docker thing was too big, too complicated. We didn't want to maintain this whole thing. Second, it had too many opinions. Like we were going to have to fight against. Uh, this thing that was both a container engine and a user experience for containers. And thirdly, it wasn't really a standard, right? It wasn't a standard at that point. So we didn't have that much control over it. And so we didn't do it. What happened next? OCI, run C, standards, yay! Standards, woo. Uh, and actually, that was actually really good. So uh, we created some standards in the industry around containers using the OCI standards. So a container for container runtimes and shippable images, uh, and a little implementation that was pulled out of Docker, uh, which is called Run-C, uh, which is, uh, in terms of these things, not that bad a name. But that's because of how bad everything else is. Uh, wait till we get to container later. Um, uh, and we got to share some code. So 
we were like, this is great. Um, this is great. This run C thing is exactly what we want. It's small. It's not opinionated. We don't have to maintain all this stuff. And we can share some code. And it really is a standard. Brilliant. We need to go and use that. And that started what I call the year of glue, uh, when we were like, OK, uh, how can we use all this stuff together? Um, how can we get rid of some of the stuff that we've been doing that was custom, get this thing in there? Um, what were the results of that? Um, they were pretty good. I want to say how long it took me to delete the gnome face from that. I, I was expecting more happiness about that image. There's no, there's no gnome. There's like 400 rounded black rectangles in the keynote for this. Um, so what we ended up with was really quite nice. Because we split the implementation of Garden uh, and the implementation, the Garden API stayed the same. Uh, and we were able to have this Garden API, but just manage these standard bundles and use the standard tool to run it. So that takes you to about the start of last year. Um, so Glue and Standards is great, but what's Garden for now, right? Like, if we're just wrapping this Run C thing, what's the Garden team for? What does it do? Uh, are we an empty hat? <laughs> um, well, I think we do three things. Uh, we're, we're glue, because uh, actually that's not a bad thing. Gluing the rest of the system to the low-level stupid stuff is a thing that someone needs to do, and keeping that abstracted is not a bad idea at all. Uh, the second thing is we make sure there are secure defaults, because unlike the upstream technologies, we have to worry about multi-tenant workloads, which are much more difficult um, and much more problematic. So we like the security to be there out of the box and pre-configured. Um, and without options that you have to remember to pull to make it secure. It's secure, and you can't really disable the security. Um, and thirdly, we're about exploiting container technology in the rest of the stack. So this stuff is cool. We're hiding it. If we're going to hide it, we don't want to hide it too well. We want to make sure that it actually gets used above what Garden does. So that's Garden. It's glue. It's secure defaults, exploiting container tech. And now in an effort to prove that I'm not lying, cool new stuff for each of the bullet points in turn. Huh? Yeah. So uh, we've got glue, which is the new sidecars work, secure defaults, which is the rootless work, and container tech, which is OCI build packs. Uh, let's go. Glue. So glue is all about garden peas. What are garden peas? Uh, to understand garden peas, you have to understand about pods. And pods are this concept that Kubernetes uh, popularized. They're a collection of containers that share some namespaces. So their container images are shippable images. They're encapsulated and isolated, but not completely. They share some stuff, like, for example, the network. Uh, why would Cloud Foundry want something like that? It turns out we actually have quite a few use cases for things like that. Things like health checks uh, that we want to run in the container, but we don't want to affect the container's memory limit or be affected by the container's memory limit. The new Envoy proxies. Uh, that I think you might have heard about that sit in your container and proxy requests and do SSL for you, um, CFSSH, other stuff. The important thing is why it's called that. And the reason it's called Garden Peas is pods are a collection of Docker containers or whales. That's why they're called pods, because uh, pod is a collection. <laughs> Does anyone see where I'm going here? A pod <laughs> is a collection of whales. What is a pod a collection of in a garden? In a garden, a pod is, of course, a collection of peas. So a pod contains peas, garden peas. You may grow now. OK. <laughs> Literally the most important part of the feature. Um, the, it, there is an important difference between uh, peas in garden um, and this pod concept, uh, which is you don't have to think about it. Cloud Foundry does all this stuff. This is just low-level tech, and we're just gluing the Cloud Foundry experience to this stuff. That's Garden Peas. Uh, I want to talk about secure defaults and some really cool stuff that we've been doing. Uh, it's called rootless mode. Out of the box, Garden turns all the security levers it can turn on on for your containers. But there's a bit of a problem. When you see a door that's really, really secure, what do you start thinking, if you're awful like me? Um, you start thinking about the wall, right? And when you've really secured the door, the wall starts to look attractive. And we turn on a lot of things. In fact, we've secured the crap out of the containers, but our actual garden server is starting to look a bit risky, right? Because to do all this stuff, we have to run as root. 
So even though all the containers are very secured, we're running as this highly privileged user. Uh, and at this point, that starts to sound like a problem. Uh, so how do we fix that? We're going to secure that as well. We're going to secure the garden server and run it as an unprivileged user instead. Um, there's way more details about that in an awesome talk that's straight after this one uh, by this man, William Martin. So I'm not going to talk about that way more, uh, but it's awesome. Uh, third, exploiting container tech, OCI build packs. So uh, normally in Cloud Foundry, when you run stuff, you take this droplet object, which is a tar file, and you stream it in to this container, and then you untar it inside a container. Uh, that sucks. It's CPU intensive. It doesn't really cache very well. And you have to pay for all the container technology when you're untarring this stuff. So you've got to have disk quotas and layered file systems. What can you do instead? It turns out the Docker community, in particular, have this great solution, layered file systems and container images, uh, where you can have some shared layers and some different layers and a format for describing them. And that's the other one of those OCI standards that we talked about earlier is the image standard. Uh, and if you think about it, the top layer, which is just a tar file, looks an awful lot like a droplet. The bottom layers look an awful lot like a root file system. Uh, so why don't we just do that? Why don't we just convert the droplet into a layer, have the root file system be a layer, and then we can build that all up, do it in a mount, and you don't have to pay for all the CPU stuff. Uh, that's OCI build packs. And that would seem like a lot of cool stuff, but one more thing, it also all works on Windows now which is pretty cool. Because it's all based on standards now, because it's all glued to some low-level technologies, the exact same code now powers the Windows Cloud Foundry stuff. Just instead of Run C, it has a plugin called Win C. Maybe Wince, I don't know. If it's not already, it should be. Um, so that's the cool new stuff. It's quite good glue, actually. Uh, what's next is two things that I want to talk about quickly. The first is Containerd or Containerd depending on how you feel about people who work on containers. Uh, the second is uh, CPU metrics and sharing, which is largely about uh, me saying that what we currently have sucks, and then hoping someone has a better idea. So, container D. Uh, if you think about Garden, it's been a long history of deleting bits of ourselves and moving up the stack and reusing code, and that's good. What do we do next? There's this container D thing. We'd like to use that. Why are we doing this? Why do we want to pull this container D project in? Um, so it's a bit more uh, of the code from the community that we can use. Right? So we're already using run C. Container D is uh, more of the Docker daemon that's been pulled out into an unopinionated piece of code. It's really nice we can share that. It opens up some nice deployment scenarios. Uh, the thing I really like is none of the rest of the Cloud Foundry needs to care. You get to use the nice operator tooling that you're used to in CFCR and see if AR, because it's going to use the same container tech, but Cloud Foundry just works, and we can just pull that out. That's pretty good. Uh, CPU metrics. Uh, basically, they suck. Um, we've known that CPU metrics in Cloud Foundry uh, suck for ages. Um, I thought I was going a bit mad, uh, because I kept saying they suck, and people kept pointing out that no one seemed to be complaining, so why would we do anything about it? Uh, now everyone seems to have noticed they've sucked at the same time. Uh, so within the last month, approximately everyone in this room has told me that they suck, and I said I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the problem with CPU metrics? The problem basically is that there's no really great way of doing CPU metrics given how we do CPU in Cloud Foundry uh, at the moment. So at the moment, uh, the way we do CPU sharing, it's really hard to know what your CPU is a percentage of, because it changes all the time, the amount that your app can have, depending on what lands on the host. Um, all of the possible solutions to this are bad, uh, but we did really well. We picked the worst. Um, there's some rough solutions that I could think might work. I think one of the things we should probably do is stop lying by using percentages. If we don't have something that's a percentage, I think we might just have to have a different number like absolute CPU usage, how many milliseconds you've used. Uh, maybe you could even bill on that. I don't know. Um, but definitely not what we're doing. Um, and I think the reason it's so bad at the moment might also be because the actual sharing is bad. So the reason we can't do good metrics is because we don't have a really great model of sharing the CPU in the first place. So at the moment, we do uh, sharing by saying, well, if your app is 64 meg and this person's app is 64 meg, you both get the same amount of CPU. 
If another person's app come up, comes along, you all get a third of the CPU. That's great, but it means the amount of CPU you have changes all the time, and you as a user can't predict why or when that would happen, um, which isn't great. Uh, so maybe we can do something like have a CPU maximum that actually allows you to have a burst capacity or something like that, but at the moment, we're just very open to feedback about what might make sense for people. Um, the first step in solving a problem is admitting you have a problem, and we have a problem with CPU metrics. So, um, yeah, um, we'd really appreciate people's ideas and thoughts and experiences, uh, and just people telling us that, yeah, this is a problem for you and something we should work on. So that is around it. Uh, what is Garden? It's Glue, it's Secure Defaults, and it's exploiting container technology. Um, we've done some pretty cool stuff this year between um, thinking of really funny names for things, um, some really big security advancements, um, and some nice performance improvements in the platform. Um, and I think we have a couple of pretty cool things that are going to deliver some e even more deletion um, uh, and also some nice benefits for people. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, we have tons of time for questions. Um, any questions? Yeah. So, so the question is, with the OCI build pack stuff, is this going to affect the user interface? Are, are users going to be able to get some new features from the OCI build pack stuff? Um, so the first pass of OCI build packs, we just did it as a performance improvement and a simplification. Um, there are some nice things that you could imagine happening. Given we're creating OCI images from the droplets, you might be able to do some nicer workflows around converting code into containers. Um, but also around interoperability with other systems. Um, so if you were at the talk earlier uh, about um, the worst name thing I've ever done, which is saying a lot, which is a, cloud, uh, a Kubernetes backend for Cloud Foundry, which we called Cube with a C, which is impossible to say out loud. Um, if you were at the Cube with a C talk earlier, um, this is actually based on the OCI build pack stuff. So what we do is we use the OCI build pack stuff to create a registry, and the registry serves images, so standard container images, based on your droplet, and that's what we give to Kubernetes. So what that means is you can do a, a stage, um, convert your code into a droplet, and then actually get a container image. And you can run that anywhere, for example, Kubernetes. So that's one example of a piece of interoperability that, that opens up. Um, uh, at, at the moment, we've just done that as performance and simplicity, but you can imagine that there's maybe some possibilities that we could look at next. So with the OCI build packs, they, is that a proof of concept? And at the moment, are you taking a tarball that is a droplet and then unpacking it onto, into a, a layered file system where the bottom layers of the root effects? Or are, is there some plan to have the images themselves going into the blob store instead of the tarball? So um, at the moment, so the, the current status is the, the sort of MVP is done. So the MVP is done totally transparent. Um, we just create the OCI image on the fly at the moment in Garden. So before creating an image, we just create an OCI image and pull it down and great. Um, in the future, it would be very nice to pull that up so that the decision about how to create that image happens up in Cloud Controller and becomes a kind of policy decision instead of a scheduling decision. Um, but we haven't worked on that yet. Um, although, like I say, that's exactly how the cube with a C stuff works. Right? We, we did that refactor for the cube with a C stuff. And then that's what allows us then to just give Diego images. So it means that uh, Kubernetes images. So in the cube stuff, um, we don't need to have sort of machinery for untarring stuff and all that kind of thing. You just have an image, which we've created a deployment object in Kubernetes with that image, and it just works, even though we created that image on the fly from a droplet. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, 
anyone else for anything else? If anyone else does have anything else, you really should have come to the office hours that were just before. <laughs> Yes. I was wondering if you all are open to pull requests for like cuter pictures. We are always open to pull requests, and especially for cute pictures. Um, I, I, one thing I didn't mention in this talk, because it, it feels like inside baseball, um, and I went to my first baseball game on Sunday after I'd written the talk, um, uh, is that we merged the two teams. So it used to be a separate Groot team and a Garden team, and we've now merged those back together. But. Um, I, I'm not sure why anyone would care, but we did. Um, so the group repo is, is um, now just, you just get that in Garden. Um, but it's always nice to update a picture. Anyone else for anything else? Or would people like to get coffee? Coffee? Awesome.